Hello guys, what is up? It is AskGamingR here with the ninth part of my Let's Play for MH Portable 3rd. This episode is a good one, we get to fight the f we finally get to fight our first big boss monster. The Blue Bear Ioshir, which we saw in a previous uh, quest, but we didn't get to fight him. Or mostly because I just did not feel like fighting him. So we're gonna, we're gonna be doing some farm stuff here, but because it's kinda boring, I'm just gonna fast forward through it. And then I'll unfast forward once we get to the offline gathering hall. I'm not gonna lie, that was so entertaining, that sound right there, that was like, sounded like a, some sort of arcade mixture of Mario and Pokemon. I don't know, that's the only thing I, th I could think of, like, oh, maybe I should just make an episode that's all sped up, because the music, when it's sped up, sounds really interesting. Okay, now we're uh, pouring some chili in our bowls here, and chilling in the spas, you know the huge, and gotta, gotta increase our health to 110. Actually, here the uh, um, before we uh, do Io Shear, I'm gonna do a no wait, never mind. There are no uh, hot spring quests after Io Shear. Uh, uh, next video, I do a hot spring quest because uh, I get to upgrade my health. Either that or my stamina. I can't remember. Uh, so my health would go to 120, and my stamina or my stamina would go to 110. Whatever, they're both uh, pretty good. I'm pretty sure it's the health though. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go upgrade the weapon here because remember that was that was the point of doing all the gathering. Gonna go to upgrade and finally get my Yukimo Longsword Plus. Now Yukimo Longsword Plus is a good branching weapon for other longswords. Because as you can see, when I click on this now, it can either go into the Yukimo Warblade or the Blood Cross. Now uh, you can hit start to view the equipment. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. The Blood Cross Blood Cross looks epic. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like some huge great sword, but of course it's a long sword. Unfortunately, the Blood Cross requires GG Nox parts, and we don't get to fight GG Nox until either the I think the fourth until we, until we reach the fourth star quest, and you know we're still on first. Of course, once we kill the Ioshira, which is the urgent quest, we move up to the second star quest. So Blood Cross will have to wait for a little while. I think I'm gonna go with the Yukimor Warblade, or uh, even after I kill Ioshira, I can get the Ioshira blade. Which is good, uh, it, it goes into a bunch of other things, as a, a, you know, it branches into a, a bunch of other long swords as well. So we have started the quest here, I'm going to cut off this loading time, one second. The loading times are uh, so boring, I don't want, you know, I don't want you guys to have to go through that, and I got a suggestion last video anyway from my good bud Nike TNB saying cut off the loading time, so that's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and, I think I uh, accidentally eat, okay, no, 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 never mind, that's the next quest, so. Use my rations and let's go fight this bear. Now this bear is actually in uh, area six. I'm just gonna call it Ioshira because, well, <laughs> it's not really a bear. Cause if there was a blue bear in this world, that'd be pretty freaking epic. You know, blue slash yellow. It's got some yellow trimmings or something. So, I mean, I would, I would, I would have expected this bear to be in area five. Ugh, this Ioshira. I always kick the turtle whenever I walk into this area. But yeah, I would have expected Ioshira to be in area five because that's where the honey is. But area six, I guess I'm guessing because we have we have already had the cutscene in area five, so there's not much else Capcom could do. So I, I guess that's the reason why they just decided to go with area six. And area six is even uh, I, I kind of enjoy fighting in it because it's kind of uh, watery. I don't know why, but in MH Try you had underwater fighting, and for some reason I just really enjoyed it. Now most people either did not like it or just completely you know, uh, downright hated it, uh, including my friend, and we played a lot on MH Try, my uh, in real life friends. Well, I mean, I can understand why it was really different because everyone on Monster Hunter was, n you know, not used to this underwater fighting, completely new concept, and I'm not gonna lie, I mean, I think Capcom did a good job with it, and I really did applaud them for the effort of trying to get something new, and I did enjoy it, it I mean, it was really, it was really cool. Fighting things underwater, uh, of course, it was much easier to fight them on land. Finding anything on land is easier than finding anything in water in Monster Hunter. Try, and the n new game that's come out for the 3DS, Nintendo 3DS MH3G, which is unfortunately only in Japanese and will probably never get ported over in English. All's well. Uh, just get to uh, download it legally. <laughs> I mean, 
Capcom, that's what you deserve, I'm sorry. But, yeah. Not here to criticize Capcom. Uh, look at that swipe, that is, what a beast. Look at this guy, uh, just, well, there was no blood, but, you know, it's a fish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, um, I really did enjoy underwater combat because it was just, it was just unique and all. So now here we are fighting our first big monster, and the first thing you can see was that when he spotted me, a yellow, uh, a yellow eyeball appeared next to my name in the top left there. And that's only when he spots you. The yellow, the ye yellow eye is only there when he spots you. A new feature they added in in MH Try was that when it's, when the monster is about to attack, or like has decided, you know, I want to eat you, or just pretty much attack you in general, then the eye turns red. And the eye also turns red for your felines. Now, I haven't really talked about feline combat, but as you can see, they're just chasing after this guy and hitting him. And I'm doing really well. I have not taken a single hit here. And because this guy is really slow. Now, all now he falls under the Pelagus category in Monster Hunter, which is just pretty, pretty much the beasts, I guess you could say. And unfortunately, I do get my first hit here, but it takes uh, pretty much take no damage because of... A certain skill I have, and I want to say it's divine, but I really don't remember because I haven't checked. Managed to get my circle spin a slash attack off. But yes, all Pelaguses, the Pelagus family in Monster Hunter, which is kind of like these beast-style creatures, creatures like bears and monkeys and whatnot. As weird as that sounds, maybe uh, I think I think this game has a. I'm not entirely not. I don't think this game has any Pelagus monkeys, but the previous games had. And yes. These monsters tend to be really slow, um, most of them anyway. And the reason is because, well, they're kind of fat. I mean, that's the only thing I can come up. Look at the girth of this guy's belly. It's pretty large. Once we once we kill this guy and we get to two star quests, we get to fight more, uh, you know, many a more, uh, many a more. What the hell? Uh, more Plaguses. There's just a signature swipe move, which he swipes four times into the air. It's really slow, but if it does hit you, it will do damage. As you can see right there, he stumbled back, and now I get to explain to you stumbling in Monster Hunter. Now, there's this whole calculation of hit rates and everything that I could go into for hours, but since I don't have that kind of time, I'll just give you a quick overview. Pretty much, when you deal a certain amount of damage to a certain part of the body, when you reach a certain threshold of damage, I guess, uh, then the monster will stumble or, uh, you know, roar and outrage or go into rage mode, as he's already done. Finally, when you deal enough damage, he starts limping. Now, he was limping right there, and when he's limping, that means his health is under 25%. So that means that you're eligible to capture him. Now, capturing monsters kind of just works like you have to get them cap you have to get them get them stuck in a trap and then use tranquilizer bombs to put them to sleep. Now, it's good capturing is good because you get more rewards in the quest box. Unfortunately, you don't get to carve it because, you know, you don't just carve a monster while it's sleeping. Unless you're like an animal cruelty expert or something. So, I decided that I really wanted to show you guys the carving feature. And I managed to finish it off with a nice circle spin there. But, yeah. I, w I wanted to show you guys the carving feature instead of capturing it. Despite receiving uh, a trap and three tranquilizer bombs in the item box in the beginning. Uh, I, I wanted to kill it so I can show you guys the carving, yeah, as I said before. So we are carving it right now, and unfortunately we got three Ayoshira pelts, which is not the best you could get. Um, to better, like, Ayoshira claws and other rare items like that would, would have been better, so I can maybe craft the longsword. I won't be able to craft the longsword with the parts I got from this Ayoshira, maybe I'll have to do another. Or what's even better is to do with a guild version of the Ayoshira. Because when you do a guild quest, it yields a lot. Uh, it yields more rare rewards of the monster, and more rewards in general. Because our guild quests are harder, the monsters have more health and are stronger. So as you can see, that, that little sparkle that came over my body when I got hit by my feline's bomb there, I I don't I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a skill I have now. Skills in Monster Hunter. I don't think I've gone into this before, but certain monster parts, uh, certain armor parts have a certain plus or minus uh, like attributes I guess you say in the skills skills that for example make you 
eat faster during uh, a quest, such as you know downing potions faster or eating a, a well done steak faster or something, or skills that raise your attack power or make you invincible or make you uh, you know more uh, resistant to fire, water, dragon, whatever the elements. And there's all kinds of skills that you know make you uh, more like like a turtle with more defense. I think that's uh, what the jewel is called. And now these skills are naturally uh, most armors have have a when when you get the whole set of an armor, it'll create some skills. So for example, I have all of my, all of uh, Yukimo armor right now. So I'm sure that this has two skills, two skills or so, two skills or so. The downside is that some uh, most most armor sets also have one negative skill. Now in order to cancel out this negative skill, you have to create gems. Now this is really confusing, but I'll go into depth once I start creating jewels, I mean, sorry, decorations are what they're called. Now decorations work that they have a plus certain amount of that skill and that you can attach it to your armor. So let's say for example that I had minus 10 hunger. Now this means I would, I think it would mean that I would eat slower than normal. However, I could get a gem that's plus one hunger, for example, and just attach it to a piece of armor, and then I have minus nine. Minus nine hunger won't do anything because it your your hunger will only be lowered once you get minus ten. So once that anything with ten or fifteen or even twenty is what you need to have a skill come into effect. So I could have my armor could add up to plus nine attack, for example, and then with the jewel I get add I can uh, attach a jewel that has one plus one attack, and then I'll have plus ten attack plus 10 attack and that means that I will have attack up small 15 would be medium and 20 would be attack up high so here we whenever you do an urgent quest urgent village quest all the villagers have these little yellow things over their head which means they just want to do some dialogue uh, you know talk with you a little bit for example the traders probably want to say that they have new items in stock and some of the villagers probably just may want to thank you for killing the Irish here of course the village chief always thanks you and then says alright now go do some more quests and whenever you do an urgent quest, you unlock the next batch of quests. So we were doing one star quest, and now we have unlocked two star quests finally. And there's a lot more monsters here and a lot less gathering, thank god. By the time we get to uh, five star quests, there will be no gathering. Once we get to the guild hall, by the time we get to like four star quests in the guild hall, which are going to be really difficult to solo, unfortunately, I'll try my best. Then there will be no gathering quests, all monster sling from there. It gets really good. That guy had a yellow thing over his head, I guess I just did not see that, or just didn't really care. Because, even if you don't talk to them right away, you can always talk to them later. Okay, collecting my paint berries here. Now, paint berries are used to make paint balls, and you throw paint balls at monsters so that you can mark them on the maps, just so you don't lose them. It's especially useful for the flying ones. Anyway, this is all that I have for this commentary. I wanted to get the farm stuff done so you don't have to see it next video. And yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please give, please give the video a like and be sure to check out my channel for more Monster Hunter videos and peace.